Research and discovery. Futurists. This is a graveyard for ships that are too old to sail. Every day, hundreds of workers dismantle large vessels at Aliaga, Turkey, in the heart of ancient Aeolia. Ships are pulled ashore and cut piece by piece over the concrete floor to prevent any leftover fuel and toxic waste from polluting the ground or spilling into the water. Piles of sorted scrap metal are sent to melting plants that provide up to 3% of Turkey's gross steel production. Uh, ships uh, grow older and uh, they need uh, to be disposed. And, and the way to dispose them, the right way to dispose them, is to actually uh, recycle them. Uh, there is a lot of steel on, on, on board the ships. They are made of, uh, of, of, of steel primarily, but there are also other uh, reusable materials and recyclable materials. Worldwide, between 200 and 600 large ships are dismantled every year. Amid concerns about the human and environmental impact of this industry, the EU is funding a research project aimed at making ship breaking safer and greener. It's called Divest, Dismantling of Vessels with Enhanced Safety and Technology, and it looks into every social, technical, economic and environmental aspect of ship breaking. What's unique about our project is the holistic approach to it, the whole integrated approach based on actual studies carried out by the shipbreaking community or even by public bodies. It's also based on real case studies and analysis done within the industry on different aspects and dimensions of the practice of dismantling. Centré sur différents aspects, différentes dimensions de l'activité du démantèlement. Despite international efforts to establish common standards for ship dismantling, current methods and conditions differ significantly from one country to another. What experts want is a database of reliable information on different practices to help improve the situation. Know your problem first and observe and understand and then start collecting data, measure. If you're able to measure, you can manage. If you're not able to measure, you cannot manage. We're trying to fill that gap by measuring. This is one of the other key motivation of the project, collecting quantified data. European and Turkish ship dismantling facilities only account for a small fraction of the market. More than 80% of vessel dismantling takes place in India, Bangladesh and Pakistan, where labour is cheap and ship owners' profits are higher. No impermeable floors or heavy machinery to be seen here. Ships are broken on sandy beaches in sometimes dangerous conditions. That means high accident rates, health risks and extensive pollution of coastal areas with hazardous materials. But the industry provides thousands of jobs in poor regions. Besides, manual labour means better sorting. Everything valuable is carefully removed from the ship to be reused or recycled. It is not ship breaking that we are talking about in India. What we are doing is ship recycling. And that is what is the major distinction uh, of the, the, the other ways of uh, ship dismantling and the Indian way of ship recycling that every component possible is recycled and reused in some form or other. Price is the decisive factor for ship owners. It pays almost 10 times more to scrap a vessel in Bangladesh, where safety standards are lower than it costs to do it in Europe. At regular divest conferences, scientists present their findings to spread the data throughout the industry. Meanwhile, in Gothenburg in Sweden rests the carcass of Full City. The Chinese oil tanker ran aground in storms off the Norwegian coast, badly damaging its hull and polluting the shore with leaked fuel. Before it sails back to China, the broken metal plates need to be replaced. This gives researchers an opportunity to measure some of the typical risks of ship dismantling. Swedish scientists Gunnar Rosen and Ingmarie Andersson have invented a method to study threat exposure levels, such as puffs of toxic fumes released when cutting metal. A video camera records all the workers' actions, along with data on smoke levels collected with wearable sensors. 
We have in the backpack, now we have uh, an uh, instrument for measuring dust and particles. And we also have a, a telemetry equipment so we can send the signal to our equipment on the wagon behind here. And we will put a tube here in the breathing zone. So we can measure uh, the same air into the instrument as he is breathing. In Sweden, workers wear breathing masks protecting them from the fumes. But in South Asian countries, smoke inhalation can kill ship breakers. Sonny Nielsen understands the risks of the craft. He's been working at the Gothenburg shipyard for 30 years. You can get burned. You can fall down from a great height, especially in winter when it's slippery, and of course something can hit your head at any moment. I think we'll be the last generation to work here. It's a dirty and dangerous job, and kids nowadays prefer to work at their computers. Careful analysis of workers' actions might lead to a reduction of exposure to toxic fumes. And that could save lives. We can see here the TV screen showing the worker we monitored. This red bar is connected to the monitoring instrument. The higher this red bar, the higher the exposure. This is for dust and smoke. We have instruments for noise, we have for solvents. We can monitor muscle activity, heart rate, whatever, uh, as long as it is of interest. South Asian governments need this data to push their shipbreaking industries to make real improvements in working conditions. Of all the main ship dismantling countries, only India has so far developed some infrastructure for hazardous waste management, workers' training, and healthcare in the last few years. I can assure you that change is happening everywhere. Uh, it, 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 it is just a matter of time now that we will see a much better situation year by year.